Book bindings date back to second century Egypt, where Christian monks sewed sheets of papyrus together, then enclosed them in leather-covered boards connected by strips of hide. Monks in medieval Europe stitched together handwritten parchments, binding them between wooden boards often covered in leather, sometimes even embellished with gold leaf and gems. The 16th century saw the arrival of cheaper printed books with simple pasteboard bindings. Today, commercial book binding is highly mechanized. The process starts with large sheets of paper, each containing several consecutive pages of the book. A worker positions a stack of each sheet into a machine appropriately called the guillotine. Its sharp blade drops down and chops off excess paper. After trimming, the stack moves into a machine called the folder, which folds each sheet into book size with the pages in the right order. As we see here in slow motion, the machine starts by perforating the fold line. Then the sheet moves along the conveyor belt until it hits a stopper to the far right. That stop position aligns the perforation between two rollers. Watch in slow motion how those rollers pull the page down, pressing a neat fold. This process repeats itself for each fold of the sheet. The result of all that folding is what's called a signature a unit of pages in the correct order but still attached to each other. A book is made up of several signatures. Another machine now assembles them in the right sequence along with the cover for binding. There are many different binding methods. This one is called wire stitching. As we see here in slow motion, the machine drives heavy-duty staples right through the spine of the signatures and cover. The staples are cut from steel wire that's so strong, you have to tear the book apart to remove them. Here's another slow motion look at that stapling action. This is another binding method called perfect binding. First, a scanner ensures the pages are in order. Then the covers go on. With traditional book binding, they sew these components together. In the perfect bind process, they glue them together. To do that, the machine first feeds the assembled books spine side down onto trays. The trays compress the pages. Then a saw underneath cuts off the folds, detaching the pages from each other along the spine. But that cut creates a smooth edge, to which glue would have difficulty adhering, so a second saw notches the spine, creating a rough, glue-friendly surface. The notched spine now runs over rollers that coat it in hot glue. Finally, two conveyor belts merge, one with the book's pages, assembled with a notched and glue-coated spine, and the other with the book's cover. The machine presses the cover onto the spine. The book now travels along the conveyor belt for another 30 seconds, during which time the glue air dries. By this stage of the process, with either binding method, most pages on the unbound sides of the book are still attached by folds. So to separate the pages, the books go through a machine called a three-knife trimmer. It cuts the folds off the three sides simultaneously. The book is now finished. Fine quality books still have sewn bindings, 
but your average book today is wire stitched or perfect bound. Those newer methods are far less costly, yet still produce books that are sturdy and durable.